Hi traders and welcome to the technical analysis market watch on Friday the 17th of February. So I've seen some really good moves this week and a lot of the levels we were talking about last week have played out and actually re completely reversed as well. So hopefully you were able to take advantage of some of those. We'll jump straight into the markets and see if we can identify any trades for today or early into next week. All right, we'll start out here with the Aussie USD. And you can see we had basically a touch up of the level that we talked about, the 70 cent mark, very, very important level. Like it was obviously on, the, on its way there last week, hit the level, 20 moving average, pulled it up, looked very, very strong level. This is why I keep talking about role reversal zones because they're so important, especially in environments like this. So you've got your support levels that ran right through there, resistance through there, and again there. So no real surprise to see it bounce off that level there. Now, you've got a 20 moving average there as well, which actually makes a big difference because that's really actually bolstering the defenses, if you like, of that level. So the 70 cent mark, you've got a psychological level straight up, like it's a round, a round number, very, very important zone, 20 moving average, and a roll reversal zone at very strong resistance. What else is it going to do? Uh, it's, of course, it's going to short. So, you know, when it gets to a level like that, yeah, you need to be taking profit. And I hope you did, because realistically, that was going to be a very, very strong uh, defense of that level. And if you didn't take profit there, you're going to be finding it very, very difficult to actually continue on without some sort of a pullback. Now, the pullback has gone all the way back to the support level at the uh, the 68, yeah, basically 68.50, which is where it's hovering now. But at this level here, it's also finding itself at a place where if it's going to turn around, this is the level it's going to. Because if it fails at this point here and continues to sell off, the next real level for this is around that 67.20. So look, let me put a, a line there so we can keep an eye on it. We'll pop a horizontal. Okay, that's really 67 sort of 20 is where we're really aiming for here. This is the level uh, that is the next line of very, very serious defense. If we fail um, to you know, hold up at this level here, because there is, there is support at this point. Yeah, don't worry about that. There is definitely support here, but it may not be enough to hold. This is only, a, it's sort of an intermediate support. The real level is here, and the real level means that it's had a very significant test of support and held up. Came back, tested it again, as you can see right through there, found problems getting through it every time, and found real support here again before it launched. Now, yeah, on face value, it looks like a head and shoulders pattern, really. You got your, your shoulder, your head, and your shoulder. So if it does fail from this point onwards, which it may well do, it is trading under the, the 50 moving average now, you know, our target's going to be the 67.20 uh, level. So a pretty good target to aim for. And, you know, realistically, if we can get uh, just a little bit more momentum, you should already probably, or you should be already in that short from this level here. I mean, I had plenty of warning from that point. The only way we would look at longing this um, opportunity is, of course, if it turned around, made a higher, high, high, low sequence on a one-hour chart or even on a four-hour chart, uh, and then closed above this level here, around uh, above the um, the 68.80, which also is above the 50 moving average and this uh, support zone here. If we get a close above there on a daily chart, then we can look at taking scalping longs up to the 60, uh, probably the 69.80 to yeah 70 cent mark again in the first instance. I wouldn't be looking any longer than 70 cents until it actually breaks 70 cents. I wouldn't take the first break, let it do its business, get it up there and close above there. Then we can look at long opportunities. But until then, yeah, we're looking at shorting opportunities down to the 67.20. So hopefully you guys were able to take advantage of some of this movement through here because it was very good trading. All right, we'll move over to the US dollar CAD now. And as you can see, um, this has been pretty strong this week as well, right? So you know, no, no real surprises here. It's been a pretty strong level. Uh, you can see the MACD divergence has certainly kicked in. It was already playing out last week. I mean, really, the divergence was already there. You can see this peak here or this trough here on the MACD is clearly um, a lot lower than the previous one. And even though price is at the same level, okay? And then, of course, up it went. This is a consequence of dollar strength, of course, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. But yeah, in, in reality, this was probably going to be a pretty strong support zone. Uh, key levels are the 50 moving average, which is where it's at right now. And of course, the 135 level. So if you, you don't want to be going along at this point here, really, if you're not already in it, because yeah, you're going straight into a level of resistance. So you've got to be very careful there. Uh, but if it breaks past there and then comes back and retests it from above and gives us the lightning bolt that we always talk about, that's where we want to be. Okay. So realistically, uh, look for a break above there, retest, and then we can look at for long opportunities up to the 137, which is a really, really nice area. And they're going to be very strong resistance. Again, you would expect 
if it does keel over at this point here and starts to roll over, this is a very strong zone. Don't worry about that. Like there's strong support here uh, all the way through and there was resistance there. So I'd expect that there will be probably resistance there again to be very mindful. Of that. That's why I would wait for the break and a retest of that level from above before I'd start to get excited about going along there. Okay. So if it starts to keel over, lower high, lower low sequence on a 15 minute or a one hour, uh, then we know we can start shorting down to these levels here where it's been most recently 20 moving average in the first instance. All right, over to the US dollar yen. Uh, strength to strength, hit our target, as you can see, basically right on it at around that 134.70 area. Been very, very strong. Came back, retested it, you know, effectively broke out of the channel, retested the 20 moving average, and then off it went. You know, absolutely beautiful trade. Uh, you can see clearly it was a roll reversal zone. These levels, you know, very rarely let us down when the market's behaving itself. So when the market's in a technical mood, which it is most of the time, this is why, you know, we're able to talk about it so much. Uh, when it's in a technical mood, it plays the game very, very well. And the yen is doing exactly that. Hit that level and bounced off the 20 moving average with an indecision candle, as you can see, but it's really more of a hammer. Uh, and then up it went straight into our new target. Now, again, you know, we, we have got uh, a reasonable amount of resistance at this point as well, but the momentum is strong now. We've got a series of higher highs and high lows on a daily, which we know is a strong lightning bolt. Uh, but at this level, though, you've got to be a little bit cautious that, you know, we're going to find probably a little bit of resistance. But if we do break through this zone, it's a little bit like the CAD in the sense that I'd wait for it to break through and retest it from uh, above to below it, then land on the support from above. And then we'd be looking at targeting the next real level, uh, which is around that 138.60 area. I'll pop a line there. That's the level that we're going to find real resistance after this. This has already hit our first target. Um, so you would be taking profit, I'm sure, if you, pro you probably already have. Uh, if you're looking at getting in, though, this is not the time. I'd be waiting for it to break through, come back and retest it, and then we start aiming for the higher level. If it does keel over here, like the, um, the other ones can, if we see a series of lower highs and lower lows, then we start basically aiming back for the um, the 131, sort of 40 area uh, and 20 area, which is around this, this green line here. So very, very straightforward trading, very, very technical on the end. Good trading. All right, dollar index. Uh, again, similar story in the sense that it's broken to a new high. Uh, it touched a 20 moving average, as you can see right through there this week. It sold off where we expected it to sell off last week. Uh, we knew that that was resistance, and resistance it certainly was, until it came back, tested the 20 moving average, then off it went, okay, and it broke that level now, so once it picked up that momentum, it broke through that level above the 104, and um, yeah, now it's looking like it really wants to head right on up to the 105 again, which is going to mean a bit of selling off for the euro, which we'll go to now, but it's been a pretty good trade, this, and yeah, hopefully you're able to take advantage of, I guess, the biggest beneficiary, which is the euro. Uh, short, of course, uh, as you can see, uh, very similar story in the sense that it tested the uh, overhead resistance and the 20 moving average came down and it's looking to break this zone now. There is still a lot of noise around this area, okay? So I am very mindful that the noise is still there for the euro. Uh, and, and by noise, I'm talking about all of this uh, price action around through here. Uh, as you can see, there is quite a bit of congested, pro uh, congested price through this level. But if we do get a clean break, and, and by a clean break, I mean a break of the 105.80 uh, area on a daily candle. So if we get a daily close below 105.80, uh, yeah, we're really starting to look seriously at the, uh, the 102.80 area. I know that seems like a long way away, but that's the next level I'd be really aiming for. You're going to find some uh, form of support at around this level here, which is around the 104. I'll pop a horizontal line there. That's the next very strong support. Uh, and that's the first target I'd be aiming for for a scalp or a swing trade on this. But first, I'd be looking for a daily close below the uh, the 105.80. We've got a daily close below the 105.80. We clear all this noise, and then we start aiming for the 104. I have very strong support at that level, as you can see. Roll reversal all the way through, and resistance right through there. Uh, the only way I'd be looking at going long on this one now is if we get a series of higher highs and higher lows, probably on a, on a one hour or a four hour, certainly no less. I wouldn't be looking at a 15 minute in that regard. Uh, and then a break above the 20 moving average, and then we can start looking at the 108s again. But uh, likelihood is probably slim for a long at the moment, so it would need to prove itself and close above there to get us excited about that particular trade. All right, the last one we'll have a look at is the S&P 500. This one's been perfect. It stayed within the zone that uh, we set for it, and really, if you're scalping it, you couldn't possibly have gone wrong, really, if you stayed within these zones because the momentum has shifted both times. We've had a week of basically testing the low at the start and then testing the... Um, 
the pressure above, the resistance above here at around that 140, sold off that and then came back all the way down to the 20 moving average. So if you shorted it from this point onwards, uh, which we knew it was going to be you know, potential problems here, we, we flagged it for the last few weeks. Um, yeah, you knew that this 20 moving average was going to be the, the real level of uh, aim for the take profit. So hopefully if you did that, uh, you've certainly got it and you should be out of it by now. I don't know whether it's actually going to continue shorting from here. It's again, needs to prove itself. The 20 moving average has caught it for a while though. And for all intents and purposes, this is still so uh, trading the sideways market and still being bolstered by the 20 moving average. So we've got a very strong role reversal zone. You've got resistance there and support right through there, as you can see. 20 moving average also holding it up. So it's do or die for it here at this point. If it holds up above this level for the rest of the week and we get a small change of trend in the smaller time frames, a very easy target to aim for is, of course, the 40, uh, the 40, uh, 41 sort of 80 area. That's the target you'd be going for. But if we get a daily close, if we're looking on Monday and the daily close is below the 20 moving average and say at 40, 50 or lower, then we're going to start targeting the lows again. Yes, it's more than likely going to be a pretty ordinary week next week for it if that happens. So very important uh, for the daily close, whether it's above the 20 moving average or below it. If it's below it, we're going to start targeting shorts uh, down to the 4,000 in the first instance and then down to the, um, the low 39s, which is the blue line here. But if it closes above the 20 moving average and picks up a bit of momentum, I think we could see some scalping action up to around that 4180 area uh, early in the week as well. So good one to keep an eye on. So I hope everyone's had a great week's trading. I think we've had some fantastic opportunities. The technicals have held up really well. Hopefully you're able to take part in that. Have an awesome weekend. And I look forward to seeing you all next week.